All right, I'm going to take a couple minutes here and, and introduce you to some features about the library. So what's going on with the library? If I press catalog, um, I am now currently in the library. And I can see what type of library things I have. Like some, there's some interesting conic things, the linear algebra library, and, uh, and, and so forth. Um, erring to the right, we can expand it, erring to the left, some number theory things. So there's some nice libraries that are already in there. However, if uh, you wanted to add something to the library, for example, you wanted to add a nice little program, um, a library of, of things for, called area, then you can go to the website, uh, you can go to the Google Group website, and, and you can get that. Let's go to the home and number two my documents and right now we're looking in the my library and how about we go a little bit further down um, so I have area in there control C to copy so we've copied that and let's go up to the my library and we will control V and paste it in there there's areas in there so what do you think when you go to the, the catalog um, if you went back to the uh, where we were the home and number four do you think that uh, the current document do you think that if we press the catalog that it's in there no it's not well, well why not because you didn't refresh your library you can refresh your library from anywhere you are by just pressing doc and there is refresh libraries it's true I could have refreshed my library while I was still in the my documents and here I could even just press menu and I could refresh my libraries um, but again, yes, you can press dock and refresh your libraries from wherever you may be. Number four, current document. So one more time, let's refresh the, the, the library. Refresh libraries. Now when we press the catalog, then area is, is in there. And we can see what features we have. Like we have this RAM, uh, Riemann approximation method. And, uh, and then there's Riemann sum. But here is where you have to have defined. You have to have f1 of x already defined. Um, so let's go ahead and, um, well, yeah, we'll just use the library program um, that is very nice and self-contained. This little this little RAM guy right here. And um, that's it. Oh, you got oh, got a problem here because I had written the library in the beginning of it. Ooh, that's nice. It's bold. That means it knows what it is. If you didn't want to go to the library, you could have typed it in all by yourself. Um, you could have said area, and then where do you find that backwards looking not a divided by sign? Oh, there it is over there. Hey, you know what? I know where there's another spot for that. Control divided by. Oh, well, nah, disregard that. Um, was it shift divided by? Shift divided by gives you that guy too. Isn't that nice? Uh, and then RAM parentheses, enter, little splash page saying, welcome to Riemann Sum Approximation Method program. You will get left, right, midpoint, Riemann approximations, as well as Simpson's rule and the numeric definite integral. You'll be asked for the function, limits of integration, and the number of subintervals, press enter. And so if I had already defined f1 of x, then I could just use that. If I don't have it defined, um, I probably ought to define it right now. For example, let's call it sine of x. Um, what if I was sloppy and I didn't include the closed parentheses? I think it will complain about that. Yep, it sure will. Um, so then maybe we should go back and try it again. Sure, we'll just up arrow twice, press enter, remon sum, there it is. Um, we'll say it's sine of x. And let's go from 0 to, I'll press my little pi and then enter. And there's there's pi. And uh, then number of subintervals. What do you think about uh, four subintervals? Hmm. Um, okay, there's, uh, there's our four subintervals. And here's the left, right, midpoint. And we could repeat that again. Here's a, a beautiful feature for you. Ready? It all shows up right there on the screen in the history. Can you run programs like this from the uh, from a notes page? That's one of the things. So I, I really like notes pages a lot. They are great for, for many, many things. However, um, running programs like this, close parentheses, needs to be in a math box. Running programs like that, it says, no, I'm not so good at doing that. Um, but up arrow twice or mm, three times, 
and then we could run it again for a, a different. It's just in 1D, so you know, got to watch your parentheses there. Um, and if we wanted to go from, how about 1 to 2, and we'll do, sure, 4 subintervals. Um, there's there's this lovely guy, and we say, OK. Um, and so there's there's that. One of my favorite ways to define a function is to graph it. So if you graphed x squared, then isn't that nice, beautiful graph? And so let's go back to our calculator page and do um, another one. Let's do area, and we'll just do our SA, where I have to actually define the b comma a comma n. And so I'll do that. I'll say I want to go from two comma one. Um, b minus a divided by the number of subintervals. Let's do four subintervals and see if we get the same exact answer as last time. Why, sure enough, there it is. Um, looks a little slight in different format. Um, again, we could just do that first one, and it'll say, "Hey, how about you use f1?" And you're like, "Yeah, sweet." Um, and it remembers what we used last time: one, two, and we could increase it to um, five this time. Boom! And there they are. Alright, so I hope that's helpful, and we'll see if we can get this posted.